This is what I love about a Down East style back cove. Um, this is a boat, whenever you're out on the water, if you see a, a guy and his girl parked up somewhere lovely on a boat like this, it's, it's head turning. You look and you're jealous. And it just makes you feel good when you're on board. And that's what I feel like right now. So you've had a few boats before. You know what you enjoy out of your boating life. And you've got high expectations, high quality expectations. And you're a bit of a stylish guy or girl. You want something that's good looking. Well, if I'm talking to you, then this, this video is definitely worth your while. I'm Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life. And today I'm on a Back Cove 340. The O is for outboard. So it's a brand new model from Back Cove who are traditionally known for shaft drive diesel boats. This is taking it to the next level. I'm gonna do a bit of a walkthrough. Jed from eMarine, the Australian and New Zealand dealer has been kind enough to let us take out the boat for the day. And he's also behind the camera. So I hope you enjoy and come along for a ride. So I'm just gonna take you through the cabin of the boat, focusing initially on the helm. Um, really nice, sensible laid out helm. Position wise, obviously on the starboard side, but um, access to your guests and visibility around the boat is awesome on this style of boat and on this boat in particular. These great big windows stretching all the way around. There's nothing that you can't see. So this would be you know, quite a kid friendly boat as well. Um, but from an operational perspe perspective, um, it's social. Your mates can pass you a drink, but you can see everything around the boat as well for parking and anchoring situations. This window here slides all the way back and opens, as does this one. This uh, roof hatch slides open as well, and this central window even pops open. So no need for aircon up here. You do have aircon downstairs, but up here, you know, plenty of sun protection heaps of ventilation, not necessary. Um, the helm, as I said, is good looking helm and it's got everything you need and nothing you don't. Um, throttles just here. This is our joystick operation for the Yamahas. So we've got the twin 300 four stroke Yamahas. This allows you to, by operating the joystick left, right or spinning around, it'll do the thinking for you and enable you to berth the boat with ease. That is super handy. What it also has, is a bow thruster. Now you'd say to me, I can hear you already, why do I need a bow thruster if it's got a joystick? The answer is there's loads of leverage happening at the back of the boat and joysticks are great in most situations, but it is also nice to have a bow thruster just to complement that. If you get a big gust of wind and your mate can't reach the bow line, you can, rather than having to go around and do it again, you can just tap it out with the bow thruster. So, Really nice, um, all Back Cove uh, branded switches here and here as well. So this is just a mixture of blowers, um, windless operation, horn, wipers, lights, just here as well. Um, this is the zip wake just here. So that's taking over from your traditional trim tabs, which were just tabs that hang over the back of the boat. These are now interceptors 
that drop down and deflect the wash. And this is a, a neat piece of technology. It's using basically gyros and GPSs to uh, determine the angle of attack of the boat and do the trimming for you. So it's really simple. You just press auto and it does it all for you. It does have a manual override. So if you're a, a driver and want to do everything yourself, you can. Um, the Yamaha diagnostics control is just here. That's, that's just all your normal digital diagnostics feed out. Um, mechanics will refer to it as well. But when you're driving, you've got your revs, you've got your fuel um, and all your other necessary information you can keep up on the display. Um, you've got your key activation and then your press button start stop here. Super plush nice wheel with stainless steel inlay in the middle that's that's nice to see you, you, so many boat builders use generic wheels um, this is beautiful we've got two cup holders that are going to be out of sight on the starboard side um, so you can have your coffee and your beer and you've got a little little uh i know that's all just more switches just there i thought that was for keys another little access to switches just in there and something i love for the short blokes this little step here so us little guys can actually see over the bow when we're underway that's nice and again it's in timber um, so it's it's really well finished with it i can feel there's a little bit of grip uh grip tape or something on the timber this helm chair is is lovely it's comfortable um, it's adjustable so you can slide it out of the way if you want to stand up and drive or you can slide it forward if you're on a long journey and sit and be comfortable. You've got big padded armrests and as you can see the whole thing can um, swivel around and become part of the action so that's great. Uh, grab handles, a big feature on this boat we have a couple nice um, cherry timbered grab handles just up here. I've got some just at the helm and on the guest side as well. They're all around the boat. She's a safe boat, this one. This social seating, again, it's a, it's a sensible use of space. This is in L-shaped seating mode and three or four people can sit up here comfortably. You are up a little step and so you've got a, a really good view over the water. Um, and once again, comfortable everywhere. The great thing about this is this seat, which is currently facing aft, actually swivels up and this seat here can adjust as well. So if you're in lunch mode and you've had enough sun and you want to move in to the cabin and actually be out of the sun to eat your lunch, that can pop up and we've got a, a U-shaped seating area for six people. If you are underway and you want to enjoy the ride with the skipper, this can actually swap around and just slot in here to face forward. So you've then got a forward facing seat for two people with drop down foot rests as well so they can be comfortable. And once again, drink holders. They're just dotted all over the place. It's super sensible. In terms of our refrigeration, we've got two fridges, um, one here and another one on this side. And uh, they're both 12 volt. We've got a, a nice, really big stainless steel sink. It's um, quite deep and very wide that one. So you could actually just throw all this, all the you know, rubbish after lunch in there and worry about washing it up later. And I like how you've got this little cutout here so you can still operate the, um, the hot and cold tap without having to take that off. So that's good. A um, whole bunch of drawers. One thing worth noting, this one's got a nice little knick-knack shelf. So that's a good place for popping your keys and even mobile phones if you just want to get them out of the way. These are all just regular drawers. You put your pots and pans in here microwave just here and a two burner electric cooktop because we do have a generator just here. Um, this one is your rubbish bin and then another little, uh, a little area for putting things here. This is all Corian and this is lovely cherry timber and this one is a maple inlay. So that's, this is just lovely which we also have out the back here. We'll move out and I'll Gonna have to put my sunnies on for this because she's a bit of a bright morning here in Sydney. So this is what I love about a Down East style back cove. Um, this is a boat, whenever you're out on the water, if you see a, a guy and his girl parked up somewhere lovely on a boat like this, it's, it's head turning. You look and you're jealous. 
and it just makes you feel good when you're on board. And that's what I feel like right now. It's comfortable, it's cool, and it's also practical. We've got these lovely little tables here. You can come out here and have your cup of coffee in the morning. The seats themselves, they are ergonomic. They're just right. Uh, you know, the Americans, they've been doing ergonomics really well since the 50s. So um, you'd expect them to keep doing it well. But it's something, I, I, a common theme on this boat. It's comfortable and it's well built. But this is lovely. We have matching uh, on that side as well. And there's even an infill which goes in here so we can stretch this all the way around. So um, this can become one giant seat just here. And when you're using the boat through the day, you can have it open because we obviously have the swim platform and you're gonna to wanna to go for a swim. Being an outboard boat, you do sacrifice a little bit of space on the swim platform. The way they get around it is they redesign the platform to extend on either side and give you a little bit more space on either side. And pros and cons with everything really, you've got the, the beauty of outboards, you've got the low maintenance, you've got the high speed. It's a boat that you could just pack up and forget about for months and months, go away on holidays, come back. These things are still gonna fire up into life. You're not gonna have any issues. Um, and the trade off is less swim platform. But we have a, a swim ladder, which just uh, telescopically de deploys uh, beneath me here. We've got a beautiful stainless steel grab handle just here. We've got a pull out swim shower just here. That's hot and cold. Um, and it is, it is hot and cold, even though this is an outboard boat because we have a generator, so we can heat it up off the generator. Um, nice big transom door here. You'd obviously have that closed if you were setting up the aft seat. And another grab handle on this side just here. Moving forward, I did discuss a, another area for storing fenders before, and that's this area here. This is a really large locker, and we actually have the generator. That is a diesel generator with its own fuel tank. Um, so that's where we get the 240 from. That's how we can r run the air conditioning. And it's also a good spot for popping a couple of fenders and uh, extra rope, should you need it. But the most amazing storage area on this boat is right here, because traditionally on this style boat, you're gonna have inboard engines, great big engine bay, shaft drive gearbox and all the associated machinery. Well, we don't have that anymore. It's out here. So what do we have? We have a ginormous storage area, so big that you could go on a, a long holiday, load it up and never really have to come back to shore. You could have this thing for your whole summer holidays, load it up and just go exploring because you got enough storage to do that. So I am not kneeling down right now. This is the storage area in the Back Cove 340. It's massive. We've got lockers on either side and ginormous amount of storage and access to all your systems. So it's a bit windy up here on the bow today. So I'm trying to face downwind, but apologies if you get a little bit of wind noise in the microphone. Um, up here on the bow, we did anchor this morning. It's all electric operation from the helm. Super simple, um, really no issues whatsoever. Nice big stainless steel bow roller. Our windlass is set into the deck, nice and neat and out of the way, not gonna catch on anything. Um, we have a, a hatch which accesses really easily just here. Now that is super large. So you've got a space for all the boat's fenders and rope if you chose, but we actually have another hatch down the back of the boat, which is another option. So you could keep a couple up the front, a couple down the back, then you never have any transit forward and aft to reach things. Um, three decent stainless steel cleats, one here and another one there and one here. We can also operate the anchor from the bow using these foot pedals just here. And this bow rail is solid as. This is really good stainless work. Um, nobody's going to be falling through or bending this. Even your big, big overweight mates are going to be fine with that. Um, this deck has got some really good grip into it. It's, um, it's uh, not a problem at all underfoot. It's quite comfortable. We're looking at a deck hatch just here. That goes down into the cabin for some natural ventilation. And then moving aft, I'll just focus on some of the features we have on the cabin. We've got a three-piece windscreen, that's all tough and glass. We've got three windscreen wipers. So many boat builders 
don't even bother to put three wipers. So it's nice to see a, a boat that's been properly set up to go places. You know, so many of them will just put one wiper here and you forget about the rest. It's like, well, that's not very useful on a miserable day. So um, that's great. Don't forget this opens as well. So we've got the side opening, we've got the deck opening and this forward opening here. So loads of ventilation and this solid roof gives heaps of obviously sun protection, but it's also um, insulates against some of that heat load. The roof itself, apart from being sexy and mounting your aerials and your other grab handles, it's super handy for surfboards and for kayaks and for stand up paddle boards. So I can foresee people using a boat like this as yes, it's their sexy lunch boat and their nice day boat, but it's also their family entertainer. It's their family adventure boat. You could put a couple of roof racks over the top or not even roof racks. You could just load in a few boards and kayaks and just strap them on to these handles just here and off you go. So cracking days can turn into exceptional nights on a boat like this. And honestly, this is why you would go from a fancy center console to a boat like the Back Cove. You've got a beautiful cabin, this wonderful island bed, and a proper headboard where we can actually sit up in bed. Something you just can't do on many boats because you, you're sort of crawling in and you don't have the space. So plenty of headroom, nice timber finishing all the way around the sides. We've got a couple of reading lights. We've got some drink holders next to each bed. We've got these fiddles just here and here so you can put a few extra bits and pieces next to the bed and they won't fall out. Moving down the port side, we've got a storage area with this little open locker, which is gonna be good for a couple of books. We've got an air conditioning outlet, so that's gonna keep the cabin cool. However, we already have natural ventilation from this large hatch, which we currently have closed, and two side opening hatches, which have blinds as well. Um, just aft of this little area, we've got a great storage locker with three drawers and two shelves. So put all your bits and pieces in there. The bed's got a couple of tricks. It'll hinge up on gas struts. So you've got storage and opening drawers underneath the bed and more storage just behind here. So if, you wanna, if you're a fancy boater and you need to have your throw cushions in place, that's where you hide them before you go to bed. Below here is access to the bilge. And then on the starboard side, We've got the air conditioning, oh sorry, that's the generator control unit. And then we've got the main control panel. So that's your 12 volt and your 240 is accessible on that side. A proper hanging locker just here, timber lined, super nice. And then this small little locker just here, good for phones, wallets, that sort of thing before you go to bed. But it's actually got stereo control in there, plus 240 sockets, 12 volt sockets. And my favorite of all, this little black switch on the port side next to the bed. If you need to get up in the middle of the night and go for a pee, you can just press that switch. It'll illuminate the floor and it won't wake up everyone in the cabin. Um, coming back on either side, we have a proper spacious stand up shower. You've got hot and cold water, opening hatch. We have an extractor fan and even a seat. So everything you need in there. And then on the port side, Probably one of the nicest heads I've seen in a while. A, a very large vanity mirror. Uh, Corian uh, countertops just here. Grab handles once again. Um, a really good vanity, uh, I don't know what you call a little sinky thing. And nice opening vent hatch ventilation with a sensible blind. And one, two, three, four opening yeah four opening lockers for storage with a couple of down lights next to the vanity mirror so that's uh that's all sorted or even even some floor lighting in the toilet which i'm sure is operated by that switch too super nice well that was fun certainly worse things to be doing with your sunday morning I think after walking through this boat and having a bit of an experience today and the day before when jed and i took it out this thing's high quality. This is not your first boat, or unlikely to be. This is a boat that you buy when you've had a few boats and you know what you want. You know you want it overnight, you know you want something beautiful, and you're sure you want something low maintenance. If those are on your 
top priority list or just on your priority list, then this boat should be on your priority list because it's certainly worth a look. We will be doing a test drive and videoing it. That's gonna be another video, so you'll have to subscribe for that one. But if you want some more information, specifications and pricing, Jed from eMarine is the guy to talk to, and I'm gonna link his details in the description below. Thanks for coming along, and I'll see you on the next one. It's a bit of 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 a b